Governor Nasil Air Rufai's big stick on incompetent teachers in Kaduna State is already generating national reaction and calling attention to the critical issues affecting the education sector in Nigeria. In recent times, successive governments have had to deal with numerous issues facing the sector corruption, infrastructure, teachers' welfare, and more recently, the lack of high-performing teachers have all put the sector under the spotlight. <laughs> Primary school education is the foundation, but art appears to be weak now, forcing parents to settle for privately owned school. And as always, governments at all levels get the knock. UNESCO recommends that 26% of the nation's budgets should be allocated to the educational sector, but that's not the case in Nigeria. President Buhari's new budget proposal for 2018 is no different from what obtained in the past, with 7% of the total budget proposal going to the education sector. This, perhaps, is a departure from the norm. In 2017, for instance, 6% of the 7.3 trillion Naira budget was set for the education sector. In 2016, 6.01% of 398 billion Naira was allocated, while 492 billion Naira was given in 2015, which is about 6.01% of the total budget. 493 billion naira, representing 10.63% of the budget, was earmarked in 2014, while 9% of the 2013 budget allocation of 426.53 billion naira was set aside for the education sector. And about 400 billion naira in 2012, which is 8.43% of the education budget. With all these figures and various interventions made every year, the problem persists and it appears there is no clear-cut strategy to change the status quo. Welcome back. We're also keeping our focus on what do we do to improve education in this country. Let's go over now to Mark Bay. Thank you, Chamberlain. Well, Dr. Sam Amadi joins us now. He is a senior lecturer at Bayes University here in Abuja. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much. Oh, well, yes, I, I think there's some of our viewers who try to be getting over the fact that you used to be at the NERC. How does it feel switching from uh, being chairman of a parastatal to teaching? Well, it didn't feel so much different apart from the pressure. This is not a high-pressure job in terms of schedule and timelines and defending angry uh, consumers, talking to them. But this is also uh, regulation is information, knowledge, and this is another level. So for me, it's, it's a good you know, change from the hustle and bustle of, uh, of public policy to now much more reflective talking about policy, talking about uh, policy, but two people who are learning, not people who are contending for power or contending for profit. So this is a, a much more harmonious kind of work for me. How would you rate the dignity in the job? I think uh, not as high as it used to be because uh, Nigeria has become, uh, there's a value disorientation. In those days, I remember when I, would, when I was growing up, uh, lecturers who live in uh, university quarters, it looked like as if they were, especially they were the elites were those professors. We went to, when I went to uh, Suka for the first time and I had to stay in a, a professor's house, it was like this is a heaven of peace, dignity, respect, because we have not become so materialized. But to today, um, the job is is self dignifying if you approach it from a right point of view. But if you're looking at social, what we call positive reinforcement from society, it's, it's not that high. So uh, a lecturer, if you go to a social event and tell yourself as a lecturer, a professor, uh, you may not draw so much. Uh, there will be nobody asking for autographs uh, as compared if you're a politician or if you're a rock star or if you're a, a broadcaster, a journalist like you. So in terms of social affirmation, I think uh, not that high. But in terms of the dignity that you are... Uh, somebody who is producing knowledge, who is helping to mentor. If I, yesterday I, I was a panelist to a student's debate on should Biafra have self-determination. Interesting debate. And I just, it struck me that many professors 
lecturer didn't even attend the event. That was a judge. And I said, look, the biggest point of this job is mentoring. Those of us who believe in influence more than affluence see it as an opportunity to, to shape the thinking of the next generation. So in that sense, it's, even if you're not paid salary, it's truly a fully rewarding work. But you need to be a Plato or Aristotle to live to today's world and be joyful that you are changing tomorrow and that's not to show for it. So it's, it's a win-lose. You win the sense that you see yourself contributing more. But society loses because it's not really valuing you know, that production of knowledge. Because in the public space, knowledge is not being given high premium.